the members of the club on their return home for the collection of all the legomenisms existing in their native lands and for placing them at the disposal of the learned members of this club which they had founded and secondly what was to be done in order that the legomenism might be transmitted to remote generations by some other means than only through initiates before my enrollment as a member of the club, a great variety of reports and discussions concerning these two mentioned questions had already proceeded at that general meeting of theirs. And on the day of my entry, a great deal was said on the question how to obtain the participation in the main task of the club of initiated beings, of the followers of those so-called ways then called Onanjiki, shamanists, Buddhists, and so on. Well then, on the third day after my enrollment as a member of this club, there was uttered for the first time that word which has chanced to reach contemporary beings there and which has become one of the potent factors for the total atrophy of all the still surviving data for more or less normal logical being mentation namely the word art, which was then used in a different sense and whose definition referred to quite a different idea and quite another meaning. This word was uttered in the following circumstances. On the day when the word art was used for the first time, and its real idea and exact meaning were established among the other reporters, there stepped forward a Chaldean learned being, very well known in those times, named Akshar Panziar, who was then also a member of the club for legomenists. As the report of that already very aged Chaldean learned being, the great Akshat Panziar was then the origin for all the further events connected with this same contemporary art of theirs, I will try to recall his speech and repeat it to you as nearly as possible word for word. He then said as follows, The past, and especially the last two centuries, have shown us that during those inevitable psychoses of the masses from which wars between states and various popular revolts within states always arise many of the innocent victims of the popular bestiality are invariably those who owing to their piety and conscious sacrifices are worthy to be initiates and through whom various legomenisms containing information about all kinds of real events which have taken place in the past are transmitted to the conscious beings of succeeding generations. Just such pious men as these always become such innocent victims of the popular bestiality only because, in my opinion, being already free within and never wholly identifying themselves as all the rest do with all the ordinary interests of those around them, they cannot, for that reason, participate either in the attractions, pleasures, and sentiments, or in the similarly clearly sincere manifestations of those around them. And in spite of the fact that in ordinary times they exist normally and in their relations with those around them are always well-wishing in both their inner and outer manifestations, and thus acquire in normal periods of life the respect and esteem of those around them. Yet when the mass of ordinary people fall into the said psychosis and split into their usual two opposing camps, then these latter, in their state of bestialized reason during their fighting, begin to entertain morbid suspicions of just those who in normal times have always been unassuming and serious, and then if it should happen that the attention of those under this psychosis should rest a little longer on these exceptional men, 
they no longer have any doubt whatever that these serious and outwardly always quiet men have undoubtedly also in normal times been nothing more or less than the spies of their present enemies and foes. With their diseased reasons, these bestialized men categorically conclude that the previous seriousness and quietness of such men were nothing else but simply what are called secrecy and duplicity. And the result of the psychopathic conclusions of these bestialized men of one or the other hostile party is that without any remorse of conscience whatever, they put these serious and quiet men to death. In my opinion, what I have just said has most frequently been the cause why the legomenisms about events which really took place on the earth have, in the course of their passage from generation to generation, also totally disappeared from the face of the earth. Well then, my highly esteemed colleagues, if you wish to know my personal opinion, then I shall sincerely tell you with all my being that in spite of all I have told you about the transmission of true knowledge to distant generations through corresponding initiates by means of legomenisms, there is now nothing whatever to be done through these means. Let these means be continued as before, as it has been on the earth from the dawn of centuries, and as this form of transmission by initiates through their ableness to be was renewed by the great prophet Ashiata Shiamash. If we contemporary men desire at the present time to do something beneficent for men of future times, all we must do is just to add to this already existing means of transmission some new means or other, ensuing from the ways of our contemporary life on the earth as well as from the many centuried experience of former generations, in accordance with the information that has come down to us. I personally suggest that this transmission to future generations be made through the human what are called afalkalma, that is through various productions of man's hands which have entered into use in the daily life of the people and also through the human solginoha that is through various procedures and ceremonies which have already been established for centuries in the social and family life of people and which automatically pass from generation to generation. Either these human alfalcalna themselves, and in particular those which are made of lasting materials, will survive and for various reasons will be handed down to men of distant generations, or copies of them will pass from generation to generation, thanks to the property which is rooted in the essence of man of giving out as one's own, after having changed some minor detail, one or another of the productions of man which have reached them from long past epochs. In regard to the human solgenoha, as for instance various mysteries, religious ceremonies, family and social customs, religious and popular dances, and so on, then, although they often change in their external form from the flow of time, yet the impulses engendered in man through them and the manifestations of man derived from them always remain the same. And thus, by placing the various useful information and true knowledge we have already attained within the inner factors which engender these impulses and these useful manifestations, we can fully count on their reaching our very remote descendants, some of whom will decipher them and thereby enable all the rest to utilize them for their good. The question now is only this. By what means can such a transmission through the various human afalkalna and solginoha 
as I've described, be actualized.